The term adrenal is of Latin origin. It is derived from ad, which means close or near, and ren, which indicates the kidney, like in renal or like in renin. This is the adrenal gland. It is a flattened gland, yellowish in color. Um, on the right side, it is pyramidal in shape, and on the left side, it is crescentic in shape. Actually, on the left side, part of the gland is not only related to the upper pole of the kidney, but is also related to the medial surface of the left kidney. The gland is yellowish because the cortex of the gland is concerned with the production of steroid hormones, and there is a lot of fat droplets in the cytoplasm of the cells forming the cortex. The right suprarenal gland is related to the bare area of the liver and is uh, also covered by the peritoneum uh, that uh, forms part of the hepatorenal pouch and this is the hepatorenal pouch here on the left side the suprarenal gland the left suprarenal gland uh, forms part of the bed of the stomach and in both cases right and left side the suprarenal glands are retroperitoneal structures this is a coronal section to show the facial relations of the suprarenal gland. In this section you can see the diaphragm, the liver, and related to the visceral surface of the liver is the kidney and on its upper pole is the suprarenal gland. The kidney and suprarenal gland are surrounded by fat which is called the perirenal fat and the fat is encased by fascia which is called the renal fascia. The renal fascia encloses uh, not only the fat and the kidney, but it also encloses the suprarenal gland. But there is a facial layer that extends uh, to separate between the kidney and the suprarenal gland. From the surgical point of view, this uh, facial septum uh, makes it easier to remove the kidney, like a nephrectomy, without affecting the suprarenal gland. The blood supply of the adrenal gland is a, there is a profuse blood supply because it is an endocrine gland. The arterial blood supply is derived from three sources. The first source is the inferior phrenic artery here, which is a branch of the abdominal aorta. The inferior phrenic artery is uh, supplying the diaphragm and it sends a group of branches to the suprarenal gland that constitute the superior suprarenal arteries. The middle suprarenal artery is a direct branch of the abdominal aorta and the inferior suprarenal artery is a branch of the renal artery. This is true for both right and left suprarenal glands. The venous drainage is provided by a single vein, the suprarenal vein. On the right side, this vein, this is the left, right suprarenal vein, drains into the inferior vena cava. Here you can see the inferior vena cava has been cut because the liver has been removed in order to show the suprarenal gland. And so this is a very short vein that drains directly into the inferior vena cava. On the um, left side, it drains into the left renal vein. And the left renal vein not only receives the left suprarenal, but also receives the left gonadal vein, whether it is the testicular vein or the uh, ovarian vein. On the right side, both these veins, in other words, the um, right suprarenal and the right uh, gonadal vein, are drained directly into the inferior vena cava. So it should be kept in mind that during adrenalectomy, that's to say the surgical removal of the suprarenal gland, the, um, the sources of the blood supply of the gland should be tied off before removal of the gland. The first thing to, or the first structure to tie should be the vein, the suprarenal uh, vein. And this is for two reasons, because the first reason is that manipulating the gland will cause a surge of the uh, secretion of the hormones, uh, particularly the catecholamines. So in order to prevent this surge, then the suprarenal veins should be tied first. And for the second reason, and this is particularly true for the right suprarenal vein, is that this vein, as you can see it here, is short and is wide. And uh, uh, any manipulation here 
can tighten the vein and can cause a tear of the inferior vena cava and thus a bleeding that is difficult to control. Histologically, the suprarenal gland is formed of a cortex here, this is the cortex, and a medulla. And so the cortex is the outer layer and the medulla is the central uh, layer. As you can see here that the cortex constitutes about 80% of the volume of the gland while the medulla constitutes only 20% of the volume of the gland. This is to show you uh, the histology of the zones of the adrenal cortex. You can see here uh, that uh, this is the um, zona glomerulosa, which is the outermost layer, just beneath the capsule, the fibrous capsule of the gland, is the zona glomerulosa, and then the zona fasciculata, which is the uh, thickest layer here, and then the zona reticularis. As, as, as a mnemonic, you can remember the glomerular filtration rate, the GFR. Each uh, of these zones secrete a different uh, steroid hormone, so the zona glomerulosa is involved with the secretion of the mineralocorticoids, uh, particularly aldosterone, which is responsible for the control of the salts in the body, and the zona fasciculata is um, responsible for the secretion of the glucocorticoids, which is related to the regulation of the sugars in the body and the zona reticularis is responsible for the secretion of the sex hormones um, so you can see that here these three zones are related to the control of the three S's in the, uh, in the body the, sh the salt, the sugar and the sex the zona glomerulosa is called so because the cells here, as you can see in this uh, um, magnified view, um, the cells, they are uh, arranged together like clusters, like in a glomeruli, hence the term glomerulosa. The cells are smaller with little cytoplasm and dark cytoplasm, dark staining cytoplasm as compared with the adjacent uh, zona uh, fasciculata and hence the name the zona Glomerulosa. In the zona fasciculata, the cells are arranged in longitudinal cords. The cells are large. The cytoplasm is foamy, light staining, because it contains a lot of lipid droplets in the cytoplasm, more than that present in the zona glomerulosa and the zona reticularis. You remember that these cells, they secrete steroid hormones. So usually they have the precursors uh, in the lipid droplets present in the cytoplasm. So these cells, they are, as I mentioned, they form fascicles like cords, longitudinal cords that are perpendicular to the uh, capsule of the gland. The deepest layer is the zona reticularis and here the cells also are arranged in cords but these cords are in different directions so giving rise to the uh, um, form of a mesh or a reticulum hence the name reticularis the cells are darkly stained because they contain less lipid droplets in the cytoplasm and they are also characterized by the presence of the uh, brown pigment, the lipofuscine pigment, which is uh, increased in amount in, uh, with advancing age. This pigment is not only a characteristic of the cells of the zona reticularis but can be present in cells elsewhere in the body like in the hepatocytes and in the neurons. In the adrenal medulla, the cells, as you can see here, they form clusters. And you can see that there is a clear demarcation between the adrenal cortex and adrenal medulla. This can also be shown in this photomicrograph. There is a clear demarcation between the cells of the adrenal cortex. Of course, the, the deepest layer of the ad uh, adrenal cortex is adjacent to the medulla, that is the zona reticularis. And the cells of the adrenal medulla have the characteristics of the um, sympathetic ganglion cells. In addition, they contain some granules in the cytoplasm. These granules, they um, store the um, hormones, the adrenaline and noradrenaline uh, that are secreted by uh, these cells. These cells are also called chromaffin cells because 
um, they have the affinity to stain when they are um, fixed in chromium salts as you can see here and this is specimen that the uh, cells secreting the adrenaline uh, or epinephrine is are stained lighter than the cells that are uh, responsible for the secretion of noradrenaline and norepinephrine. By the way, the uh, epinephrine and norepinephrine are the synonyms of adrenaline and noradrenaline, but uh, they are mo mostly used in American literature and they are actually derived from the Greek terminology. Like epi means above and uh, nephro, nephron is related to the kidney. So it is again means that it is the gland above the kidney or the hormone of the gland that is located above the kidney. Nephro, um, like in uh, um, nephrology, like in nephritis, uh, like in the nephron, which is the functional unit of the kidney, the suprarenal gland, like many other glands in the body, is actually made of two parts that have distinct function, distinct embryological origin, and they are regulated by distinct mechanisms. While the cortex of the kidney is regulated by the ACTH secreted by the pituitary, the adrenal medulla is regulated by the sympathetic nervous system. By the way, the adrenal medulla is derived embryologically from neural crest cells, migrating neural crest cells, which also give rise to the um, sympathetic ganglia of the autonomic nervous system. Also, they give rise to the C cells or calcitonin secreting cells of the um, thyroid gland and many other derivatives. While the cortex is embryologically derived from the mesoderm, uh, which is uh, uh, closely located to the um, region where the gonads are uh, derived. Now, the adrenal medulla is controlled by the preganglionic sympathetic fibers that um, arise from the sympathetic trunk in the thoracic region. These are called thoracoabdominal splanchnic nerves. They are preganglionic nerves and these reach the celiac ganglion. In the celiac ganglion, these splanchnic nerves, most of them they will relay and form postganglionic neurons that will accompany the branches of the celiac trunk to be derived to, to other abdominal viscera. Only few of them they pass through the ganglion without relay and they remain preganglionic fibers and they approach the adrenal medulla where they relay on the cells of the adrenal medulla. So these cells are, uh, in reality, they are postganglionic cells. The cells of the adrenal medulla are postganglionic cells and they secrete their neurotransmitter into the blood like an, an, an endocrine gland. However, some of the um, sympathetic fibers that reach the adrenal gland are actually postganglionic fibers and these are uh, concerned with the control of the lumen of the blood vessels. They are vasoconstrictors and they are not related to the control of the secretion of the adrenal medulla. The arteries that reach the adrenal gland, they will form a plexus. Uh, of vessels which is called subcapsular plexus just beneath the fibrous capsule and from this subcapsular plexus short cortical arteries will traverse the adrenal cortex and give rise to sinusoidal capillaries that receive the secretions of the um, three layers or the three zones of the adrenal cortex. In addition to these short cortical arteries, long cortical arteries arise from the subcapsular plexus and these long cortical arteries, they traverse the cortex without branching and they only form a capillary plexus in the medulla where they receive the secretions of the cells of the adrenal medulla. A plexus of veins is formed in the medulla which also receives the uh, venules draining the sinusoidal capillaries of the adrenal cortex. This venous plexus or medullary venous plexus will unite to form a central vein of the medulla which forms the um, suprarenal vein that drains into the inferior vena cava on the right side and the left suprarenal vein on the left side.